everybody and welcome back to the next soap. This is kind of like a fast forward. If you watched the previous video, then you know that I did a double batch of soap. So this is the second half. Now, as you can see, this batter is kind of at a, he's definitely at a light trace. So what I'm gonna do is go over what we did. So in the last video, I had already added my heavy cream powder, my buttermilk powder, and my kaolin clay to this batch. And then I split it into two. So this was four quarts, we're down to the last two. And for this one, I'm gonna be doing hot fudge brownies, and I'm gonna be doing a hot cocoa inspired soap. I've already dispersed some brown mica in a little bit of the oils, so he's ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is go ahead and add my fragrance oil to this, and I'm gonna add vanilla stabilizer. Just a reminder, anything that smells like a cooked, baked good typically has some level of vanilla in it. I don't want this to turn brown. While I'm away, I'm grab the other stuff too. So I'm gonna grab my vanilla stabilizer and get him in the batch. Swirl that in. Bring you guys together. Tear it out as usual. And I'm gonna pour in the recommended amount of fragrance for this batch size. This is easy peasy once you have the batter made. So if you guys have ever if you do make soap or think about making soap and you're wondering, do I have to make one batch at a time? The answer is no. You can do like I did today. This is two batches for me. The more intricate design, do it first. And then a more simpler design, do it second. It's not completely impossible. I'm grabbing me a spatula so I can get all the batter off the sides. And this is looking really nice. He didn't immediately discolor, which is a good sign. I got my paper towel out and I left it on the other side. So that when you're moving fast, you, you forget something. All righty, like nothing ever happened. So now I have my landing pad here. I'm gonna put my spatula there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the brown that I've already created. This is to represent the chocolate part of the cupcake. Let's pour that in. Let's focus on the chocolate. Ooh, that's looking amazing. Swap out my whisk from my good old handy dandy spatula and scrape that off the sides and the bottoms. I don't use the whisk as often as I do a spatula. I just find the spatula can scrape and get everything off a whole lot better and I just feel like it's more incorporated. That's a nice deep chocolatey color. Beautiful. I'm actually gonna move that further out of our viewpoint. I have 12 cupcake liners here. I've lined the tray with wax paper. You can use parchment paper. You can do nothing at all. It's really up to you. I like to line it just because it makes cleaning the tray off easier once we get to moving to the next step. These are all circle base. Um, the ones that I purchased on Amazon, I got four different shapes. I have hearts, roses, circles, and stars. I decided instead of having two different options, I'm gonna stick to just the one. So this is why I put the parchment paper down. I'm already making dots everywhere. I think I might get it because I've already done half and I have half of the picture left. Yay! Of course, you can measure this, know exactly how much you need to fill up 12 or 24 or whatever, but eyeballing it just works for me. It saves me on the effort of getting my scale out and having the exact and precise. It's just so much. These are as full as they can go. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes so they can firm up and we're gonna work on the frosting. Alrighty, so the cupcakes are sitting to the side. Let's work on our frosting. I'm gonna take a whole lot of titanium dioxide. I'm gonna add about half of this now. And if I need more, I'll add some more. So let's give it a good swirl. And we're gonna give it a good blend. All right, he's looking nice. I actually purchased some white mica and I was thinking about putting that in and now that I see this, I don't wanna add any more titanium dioxide because I don't wanna risk having glycerin rivers, which are these little cracklings that you'll see in the soap. So I'm gonna grab some white mica. So this color here is Phyllis Diller. It is from Matte Micas. It's a slight shimmer. I think it'll look really nice in this cream color. So this is a tablespoon measure, so I'm gonna do about half. If you ever wonder what's the difference between titanium dioxide and using a basic white mica, the real big difference is titanium dioxide is a naturally occurring substance. It is a natural whitener. It just makes this whiter. 
And then micas are a white coloring. Just like if you were to use red, purple, or green, it's just turning what you have into that color. And you guys see how much titanium dioxide I put in here. This is still really loose. My spatula and this is gonna sit to the side. And I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be putting on top. For the tops of these soaps, I made some white squares, cubes, whatever you wanna call them. And these are gonna be the marshmallows that we're gonna put on top of each one. So this is where we're going. And I'm gonna see you guys back in a flash when it's time for the frosting. Alrighty guys, our cupcakes have firmed up. They're in relatively firm. I think they should hold the frosting. The frosting's a little loose still. So here's our tester here to see how we do. So I have everything in a large packing bag with a open star tip. And we're gonna just see if we can at least get my center dollop in. By the time I get to the last one, if he's still holding firm, then we will go ahead with the frosting. But yeah, he's rather loose. I mean, he's semi-firm, but maybe not as firm as I want. My first one seems to be doing rather well, so let's go ahead and frost. So those are nicely frosted. Now move on to the next step. So these are dusted in some brown mica. So to do the salts, I took a little bit of hot man on a tin roof, which is this really deep color, and added a little bit of satin penny to it to give me a nice chocolate look. And I also have my brown iron oxide that I'm gonna also put on here. So I think I'm gonna do that first. I was gonna get my little strainer, but this is working really well. Just a little bit, not too much, not too much. Now I'm gonna take my little chocolate covered, colored sprinkles and put them on. If you drop these on at a height, like I'm relatively high away from pan, and to me that allows them to stick a little bit better. And if you watch me a lot, you know I don't wear my gloves for this, but I can actually hold this and sort of sprinkle them. And I use about a tablespoon of salt for 12 cupcakes. And I'll come back once I put the main attraction on top. I'm actually using more of this than I thought I was, but hey, that's what I do. And this is why you should wear your gloves, guys, so you don't have your fingers tinted. I'm gonna take my marshmallow and smush them right into the middle. There we go. So the cupcakes are done. Let me lift it up. Urgh! They're so stinking cute. So I'm gonna let these sit for 24 to 48 hours and then I'll come back and show you guys the unmolding and the finished product. Alrighty, and we're back. So we actually let these cupcakes sit for a little over 24 hours. Now to unmold. Cue that music. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching all the way through the unmolding process of these cupcakes. They came out absolutely amazing. If you want to get your hands on these cupcakes, they will be available at beautyandcomfort.com. And if you've enjoyed our videos and you want to see more content from us, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when our videos are uploaded, and share this content with anyone who would enjoy. 
Thank you so much, guys. Until the next video. Bye.